In this video, we'll begin our discussion on setting up classes in GradeLink. First, we'll define what a class is in GradeLink. Then, we'll take an in-depth look at four prerequisites for configuring classes. Class types, grade skills, subgrades, and graduation requirements. Before we get started, it's important to first clarify what we mean by class. Simply put, a class is a single subject taught to a group of students by a teacher. While it is possible to include multiple subjects in a single class, GradeLink recommends making one class for each subject instead. Technically, you can start creating classes as soon as you have at least one teacher and one term. However, GradeLink highly recommends that you configure class types, grade skills, subgrades, and graduation requirements first. Having these prerequisites set up prior to making your classes saves a lot of time down the road. Well, let's get started. From the GradeLink dashboard, first we'll select the Classes tab. Then, we'll take a look at the Class Type field. Class Type determines what kind of resources a teacher will have access to for a particular class. GradeLink has several built-in class types, which are indicated on the Class Type drop-down menu with blue text. Let's go ahead and take a look at them in more detail. The standard class type gives teachers access to a grade sheet, assignments, and lesson plans. The term comments class type allows teachers to record narrative style comments for each of their students. The school attendance class type is used to create a daily attendance sheet. The worship attendance class type is designed to record attendance on days that fall outside of the normal school week. The sport class type is used to track sports eligibility for students based on their grades. The credit no credit class type is similar to the standard class type, but only gives students credit if they score above a minimum grade. Additionally, credit no credit classes do not factor into a student's GPA. Lunch and extended care is used to track specific billing values that appear on attendance sheets and need to be recorded in the financial section of GradeLink. Finally, the preschool class type is used to generate a form for parents and other authorized guardians to sign in and sign out students. Administrators can also create their own custom class types. We'll go over custom class types in more detail later in the video. The next subject we'll talk about is grade skills. Grade skills determine how a class is graded and cover everything from what scores assignments can receive to what marks appear on report cards. Let's look at them in more detail. To get started, hit the gear icon next to the grade scale menu. The default grade scale is standard, which is a traditional A through F grade scale. The honors grade scale is almost identical to standard, except it has a one point GPA boost. With the standard grade scale, an A would be worth four points, but with the honors grade scale, an A would be worth five points. Alternative grades are non-standard grades that don't contribute to the GPA, such as incomplete or withdrawn. Similarly, assignment grade codes, such as excused or absent, are non-standard grades that are specifically applied to assignments. GradeLink also allows administrators to build their own custom grade scales. To get started, add a grade scale name and click Add. Each grade in a grade scale has several components. Grade symbol is the mark that appears on grade sheets, report cards, and transcripts. As an example, the grade symbol for an A+, is A+. Grade description is a brief description of the grade that appears in the legend on report cards and progress reports. Grade order determines the order in which grade codes are displayed. For example, an A+, on the A through F scale, would have a grade order of 1, an A would have a grade order of 2, and so on. Lowest percentage refers to the lowest numerical equivalent for a particular grade. For example, the lowest percentage for an A- on the A through F scale is typically 90%. Highest percentage is automatically calculated for you based on the lowest percentage of the preceding grade. In other words, if the lowest percentage for an A- is set to 90%, then the highest percentage for a B+, would automatically be set to 89.99. Letter grade conversion refers to the percentage value that the grade would be equivalent to. This value is necessary for performing calculations in cases when assignments receive non-numerical grades. GradeLink highly recommends setting the letter grade conversion to a value halfway between the highest and lowest percentages. 
Finally, the GPA value refers to the point value which the grade contributes to the GPA. In the standard grade scale, an A has a GPA value of 4, a B has a GPA value of 3, and so on. Once you're done adding grades to the grade scale, hit Submit Changes to complete the process. Now let's talk about subgrades. Gradelink uses the name subgrades to refer to any assessments that don't use the same grade scale as class assignments and don't contribute to the class grade. Some schools may also refer to them as standards, and examples include conduct and work ethics. We mentioned earlier that Gradelink allows you to create your own custom class types. However, custom class types and subgrades are actually the same thing. They're created using the same fields, but what differentiates the two is where you choose to apply them. If you create a set of subgrades and assign them to a class using the subgrades field, they'll appear in their own tab in addition to the grade sheet. If you add a set of subgrades to a class using the class type field, then instead of having access to a grade sheet and assignments, teachers will only be able to record grades for those specific subgrades. To create a set of subgrades, hit the gear shaped icon next to either the class type or subgrades field. A set of subgrades has four main parts a name, a title, custom fields, and a custom grade scale. Class type name is the name that appears internally within Gradelink, while the report section title appears on report cards, transcripts, and on other administrator reports in Gradelink. Custom fields refer to the actual subgrades. By default, you only need a field name and a field order, which determines the order that subgrades are displayed in. However, Administrators can also control the appearance of their subgrades using the options below. Field not graded hides the part of the field where the grade would appear. Bold forces the subgrade to appear in bold font. Indent determines the number of pixels to use if the field is indented. Finally, Bullet determines what symbol to use for indented fields. As we mentioned earlier, subgrades do not use traditional grade scales. In fact, you'll have to manually define a grade scale for each set of subgrades. Unlike traditional grade scales, subgrades only require a mark, a description, and an order. Comments are an optional field that can be tricky to implement. If you're interested in adding comments to your subgrades, please contact Gradelink support to have them configured for you. It's important to note that although custom classes and subgrades appear on the report card, they do not impact the class grades or the GPA. The last prerequisite we'll discuss is graduation requirements. In Gradelink, credits received from passing a class can count towards meeting specific graduation requirements. Configuring graduation requirements is easy. A graduation requirement category needs only a name and a minimum amount of required units. It is important to note that a single class cannot count towards multiple graduation requirements. This wraps up the first part of our discussion on classes. Join us for our next video where we look at configuring standards for your classes.